Hello everyone, we're Atelier 404 and our game is Forged in Steam. I'm the team lead, my name is Rian. Uh, I'm Talos Sohail, I'm one of the designers. Oh, I'm uh, Max, I'm the sound engineer. <laughs> I'm Jonathan, I'm the artist. I'm Dennis, I'm also part of the artist team. I'm Rafe, and I'm one of the programmers. I'm Victor, one of the programmers. I'm Manuel, I'm one of the engineers. So, Fortune Steam is a 2D top-down action RPG made in Unity, and the aesthetic of the game is going to be steampunk, but we're going to have a relatively cartoonish style. And um, like the um, steampunk aesthetic, it's inspired by the Victorian era of fashion and the American Industrial Revolution. And we're going to be taking place in Industrial Revolution era France, but more futuristic. Um, its story takes place in the Royal Clockwork Factory, the biggest factory in the city of the Fair. Um, so the thing about the American Industrial Revolution, at least, is that its working conditions were quite bad. <laughs> so we're going to play as this blue-collar factory worker named Lou, and he's determined to secure um, better conditions, like working conditions, for him and his fellow workers. So for our characters, we have three primary characters to start. All right. Uh, so this is our main character, Lou, and as uh, Jonathan said, he is a blue-collar worker. Get it? <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> he's a uh, mechanic in the Royal Clockwork Factory. He's very happy-go-lucky and whimsical, but he cares about his friends a lot to the point that he's willing to do anything for them. Uh, he, he, he got his leg injured in a workplace accident caused by poor workplace conditions. This is Elizabeth, our main antagonist. Uh, you can tell by her concept that you can look at her concept of it and you can tell that she's probably uh, a very positive person, but actually she's very uh, negative and she's uh, very manipulative. And so she's using the bad for, uh, working conditions of the factory in order to uh, uh, improve her own position in the world. And she has very close contact with the royal family. And this is Quibre. Uh, it's French for uh, copper and it's a mini boss. Yep. All right, <clears throat> moving on to game mechanics. Uh, first off, we have our health and steam system. So our game will have a segmented health system, which means whenever the player gets hit, they, will, they won't take a calculated amount of damage. Instead, they'll just lose a segment off their health. The catch is when they hit zero, instead of getting sent to a game over screen, their health will be replenished back to full, with the catch that they lose one off of their max, he max health. Um, upon every reset of the health bar, the health bar would come more visibly damaged as to show the player that, hey, you're getting close to your final phase. Um, the other system is our steam system. This serves as our energy system. Basically, whenever a player wants to dodge, it will consume a fixed amount of uh, steam, and sprinting will just prevent the steam from replenishing over time. Moving on to our combat system, we have two methods of attack. We want to allow the player to have a melee attack and a ranged attack. Any type of attack will happen in the direction of the mouse cursor, so it won't be dependent on movement. Um, melee attacks are chainable, up to three hits, and I, you can cancel at any point in the combo. Um, ranged attacks will use a bow, meaning that, like a bow works, you have to draw the string fully to get the full effect. So players will have to take that into account if they want to use projectiles. Um, another system we have is scavenging and upgrading. We're going to have searchable items throughout the game, and they'll be put in chests, barrels, crates, whatnot. You can also have a rare drop of an item by defeating an enemy. Some of the enemies, will, or some of the drops, will be something called an upgrade. They'll alter the nature of your weapon rather than changing the weapon itself. For example, some of the melee upgrades that we've considered so far is cutting edge, basically inflicting a bleed status on an opponent, dealing damage over time. Another one is one-two punch. Successfully landing a second hit of the melee combo will slow down your enemies, not including bosses. Um, and then we have knock them down, where if you defeat a melee energy, the player will just get a brief boost in speed, just to make the game flow a little nicer. Uh, for ranged upgrades, it's a similar fashion, just a generic uh, upgrade, but we are looking into adding more. One is just giving the bow two shots with every cost, with every arrow consumption. You have Peregrine Archer, which just has your draw time, and you have a heavy metal, which just increases the knockback that the arrow deals to enemies. So far, game therapy, we're going to create three stages. The first stage being the introduction of the tutorial stage, which is this basically allows the player to have, like, introduce the mechanics and just get familiar with the system. So our second stage will just be expanding on the gameplay stage, introduce optional rooms that aren't required to progress towards the end of the stage, introduce any remaining game mechanics in the early rooms, 
alternate room where our objective is more complex than a basic room, and the stage ends with the mini boss, uh, Quivier. And the last stage will be known as the skill test stage. The objective is to test players' skills by having faster, faster paced combat scenarios. The enemies, enemies will be noticeably more powerful, and the stage ends with the final boss against Elizabeth. So why play the game? We kind of narrowed it down to four different points. Obviously, we want an engaging narrative that it, uh, evolves with our game, as to just keep the player engaged and just wanting to keep playing the game. Um, we think that our character is pretty comedic in his nature, which will keep the relative tone of the game comedy like centered to an extent. The combat evolves as the more you play the game, meaning that the player will have options to um, better fit their play style as the game goes on, and most importantly, the game will be fun. Okay, so I wanted to show off a bit of concept art that I made for this game. So all of this has been done in Procreate, and um, with these sketches, the ones to the left, those are just some different dog breeds that we had in mind for uh, Lou. So we have the Bloodhound, the French Bulldog, and the Burger Picard, I think it's pronounced. Um, to the middle, we have a concept, a scratch concept art for the um, Elizabeth. And to the right, we have some wanted poster designs for Lou. They're supposed to be very um, uncharacteristic of him, so to an you know, comedic extent. And that's all we have for you guys.